Hey everyone, is university really worth it in the 21st century or is it only for small people? And does university make you miserable long term? Let's put our Socratic hats on and ask a series of questions until we find the truth. Let's answer these questions by discussing four fundamental topics of human existence. Food, mating, tribe, and meaning. And university is supposed to help us with all those things. The first two topics, food and sex, are fairly easy to answer. But the last two topics, tribe and meaning, are a little more challenging. But don't worry, Mr. Socrates showed us that nothing is impossible to answer if you ask the right questions. So let's tackle these topics one by one, starting with the most important element of human existence, university as a tool for survival. Why university? For centuries, universities and monasteries were the only places where you had access to great teachers, great libraries, and great education. In fact, universities had the complete monopoly when it came to good resources for knowledge until fairly recently. But Mr. Socrates, why would you need an education? It helps you find a good job, earn lots of money, so we can fill our fridge with lots of food and drinks. As animals, food comes first in the battle for survival. A university degree can get us a comfortable job in an air-conditioned building without lifting a brick. Instead of pushing a shovel against dirt, you push a pen against paper. Instead of hammering a chisel against rock, you tap your fingers on keyboard. As animals, we want the most with the least amount of energy and time. We take the path of least resistance. So a university degree allows you to glide through life without a friction and with a clean and soft pair of hands that even geishas might be jealous of. So am I saying that university is for lazy people? People who seek comfy jobs? Mostly yes. I should clarify, people who want to avoid physically challenging jobs. Throughout human history, division of labor has been practiced. Even to this day, to join the army, you have to pass a physical test and height. That's just one example. In our cave days, the strongest would go hunting for bigger games, while the smaller ones would go hunting for rodents or gather fruits. One becomes a samurai, while the other ninja. There's a theory that the reason humans grew bigger brains was because they were smaller than other primates, so they couldn't compete physically with other chimp-like or gorilla-like animals. So university is just a simple division of labor, hence there are tests. But today the majority of jobs are not physical, therefore the smaller people have won the race. To become an alpha today, you don't need to have the longest horns, but the smartest brain and tallest degrees. This is why in the US, Asians do well in universities so much so that Harvard is accused of stopping too many Asians from entering. This is also why 60% of university graduates are women. So universities are for smaller people. Are all Asians and women small? Of course not, but most are. Also, small people tend to take jokes better. Of course I'm joking, comedy is banned in most universities in the US. Okay, before you get angry at me and smash your computer or phone, let's talk about jobs. Today, most office comfy jobs require a degree. However, under every rock, there is a graduate. So to stand out, you need higher, taller, chunkier degrees. So four years is not enough. A century ago, less than 1% of US citizens went to high school or university. Today, it's close to 40%. And in Europe and India, it's around 30%. So graduating university still gives you an advantage over 60% of people in the US and over 70% of people in Europe and India. It also gives you credibility. Universities are like weeding machines for corporations. Just as humans are lazy, companies are also lazy. They let universities do the job of separating the wheat from the chaff. Not having a university degree doesn't mean you're chaff. You might be the chief. Many successful people either didn't go to university or just dropped out. Companies still rely on universities as a weeding machine. It makes it easier for their hiring committee to shred a lot of resumes. Should you start working after high school? Three, four years later, your university friend will start from zero while you have years of experience, right? But experience might come at a cost. Dirty hands. With a degree, you can bypass the trenches, making coffee and polishing your boss's shoes or becoming a yes-sir. 
But on the positive side, not having a degree might give you the ultimate superpower in today's world, humility. To become a Buddhist monk, your first task is to clean toilet because it teaches you humility. And university graduates are anything but humble. Let's talk money. This is perhaps the most important question you need to ask yourself. With anything in life, nothing comes free. Even as hunters, our ancestors did a quick cost-benefit analysis whether to go hunting in a desert, forest, or mountain. University is just like hunting. You spend your valuable resource, time and money, in the hope of hunting a giant moose. Today, a three-year university degree in the UK costs 30 to 50,000 pounds, and in the US, it's 100 to 200,000 dollars in fees alone. Universities are big businesses, so more clients means more money. But in some countries like France and Germany, universities are still free for undergrad students. So if you're German or French, I say go for it. Also, if you are in the US or UK and lucky enough to have parents with deep pockets, you should go to university. Some rich parents want their spoiled kids out of the house anyway, so it's a win-win situation. If you're poor in the UK or US, stay away from university. However, if you're extremely intelligent, driven and hardworking, you might be able to get a scholarship. Or you want to get a degree in STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering and maths, which almost guarantees a job at the end. If you do the work, of course. However, if you want to study social sciences, humanities or some other luxurious degrees, do it only if it's free or your parents are loaded, or you get a place in a top university. But if you have to go into a massive debt, then you must choose a degree that pays well. But if you are in neither of those situations, then university is not worth it. Let's talk discipline. There are two types of travel, package holiday and backpacking. For some, the purpose of going to university is not education per se, but because university plans everything for you. You don't have to worry about what, where, when, how and why of your education. From day one, they give you a roadmap, a curriculum, assess your work, offer you help. In the end, if you do the work, they even give you a certificate. Well done, you finished the walk. So if you're looking for a package education, university is worth it. But if you're a dedicated backpacker type, you can find your way in life without a chaperone. Nowadays, you can learn anything online. Elon Musk built his first rocket by watching videos on YouTube. Okay, that was a joke. Perhaps not rockets, but people build their houses, boats, businesses, and even lives by watching YouTube videos. University can give you a structured education, like a continuation of high school. If structure and discipline are the only reason for going to university, there are cheaper alternatives. Join the army. Some of the greatest writers I have talked about here, in fact, quit university and join the army to learn about the harsh reality of life. Tolstoy volunteered for the Russian army to fight for Putin. Dostoevsky was forced to join the army after his prison sentence in Siberia. Lermontov volunteered for military service to fight the Chechens. Okay, perhaps the army is a bit too much. Instead, you can start work. Work can teach you far more about life than university. From what I hear, universities have become very cushiony and safe, so it might make you even more delicate, sensitive, like a geisha. Work, on the other hand, might give you better discipline. Babies fall down a few times before they can learn to walk. Discipline is important. Even the greatest athletes need a trainer or coach to tell them to do a few more push-ups or make sure they keep their discipline when it comes to diet and exercise regime. So it's possible that university provides you with that as opposed to doing all by yourself. We all need guidance, but unfortunately most universities are not as rigorous as they used to be. So to sum up, the purpose of going to university is to get an education in order to land yourself a good job that pays you enough money so you don't have to worry about food. If you are small to hand to moose, get a degree because you will never need to dirty your hands. But you must do a cost-benefit analysis. You don't want to chew on a rock because it sucks all your calories but gives you nothing in return except some broken teeth. If university puts you in massive debt, you need to go into it with both of your eyes open. 
Now, university is not just about money and food. It's also a great place for mating. All animals tend to congregate in places where it's easier to mate. Birds migrate, salmon swim up for miles, and humans, horny teenagers go to university. Let's talk about sex. University gives you freedom from your high school teachers and your parents. Now you're an adult, so you engage in adult activities like debating the future of the world, drinking, partying, and mating. However, universities are changing. The gender ratio is skewed towards women. It's something like 60% women and 40% men in some countries. It's good news for the male students, but for the female students, the competition is slightly greater especially in social sciences like sociology, psychology, humanities like literature and art, where women dominate. Not only that, since women have become more educated than men in some rich countries, the sexual dynamics have changed. Recent surveys say that almost 30% of American men under 30 are virgins. Since women are the selectors, these men simply do not meet the standards. How about for females? As you become more educated, most men don't really measure up. Men are falling behind in high schools and universities. So you end up looking only at the men at your level or above, and these men have all the options in the world. Obviously, you might want to get a university degree for other reasons. But for men, a university degree has a big influence on your chance of finding a mate. Of course, these are not written in stone. We end up meeting with someone who we can attract. Intelligence, hard work, success, being interesting and funny as well as physical attributes like being good looking, tall, strong, muscular, with beautiful jawline, etc. play a major role. If you're scrawny, short, physically weak, then you need not one, but maybe two or three university degrees in order to find a mate. And sometimes, even then, you may not find one. And luck also plays a role. The bottom line is that universities are the best places to find a mate if you're a small person. Let's talk about politics. Most universities tend to lean left. A company's attitude reflects the attitude of their customers. Young people like reading Orwell's 1984, wearing Che Guevara's t-shirt, attending demonstrations and debating how much the world sucks. I did all those things. Old people like the status quo or the good old days. Today's young people will look nostalgically to today's world in a few decades and would complain about the youth of 2050. Generational conflict is as old as sliced bread or sliced meat. Not sure if it's true, some universities also protect you from comedians, outspoken speakers, and words that might hurt your feelings. So university is certainly for small, delicate people. Traditionally, universities challenge you mentally to compensate for the fact that it was not physically challenging. Today, if you're afraid of comedians telling a harsh joke, you're in trouble. But why have universities become so sensitive in recent years? Why now? For centuries, universities were funded by the elite and for the elite, or funded by the state for a small group of highly talented people to study in. In the past three decades, however, international students flooded universities in the West, especially those in English-speaking countries. Since they pay higher fees, universities tasted how delicious it was to get more high-paying students, so they kept looking outside and kept expanding their student body. This changed their behavior. High standard educational rigor and tight entry requirements were replaced with low standard, relaxed atmosphere and easy entry. So most universities become like supermarket or super universities. Okay, maybe I am exaggerating a bit, but customer service replaced educational rigor and students became customers. And we all know that for a profitable company, customer is God. That is capitalism 101. By the way, a course also taught in most universities. So today, for some, you enter university as a delicate soul and you are kept in a bubble, protected, and when you graduate, the real world might come as a shock. Even the most protective tribes train their members, challenge them enough to build them robustly. 
But compared to high school, university gives you freedom to develop a more autonomous personality and find a tribe of like-minded people. If you start work after high school, you end up in one company and the people are not as diverse as in a university. So the chance of meeting some lifelong friends is far greater at university than anywhere else. Also, university fraternity groups can give you job opportunities in the future and become your political and business allies. But today the world is a little more fluid as people move cities, countries and continents. So you might end up in a town where you know nobody. But no doubt you can build a tribe at university. Strong people don't need a tribe. But small people certainly need a try for guidance and protection. So, university is for small people. Historically speaking, being part of a tribe not only protected you from wolves and monsters, but your tribe also gave you a purpose in life because you were born in and you died in the same tribe. But nowadays we live individual lives, so we'll still need meaning for our own individual life. We need food for survival, sex for procreation, try for belonging, but we also need meaning in life in a world of individualism. Meaning is nothing more than a story, a clear road ahead of you. Carl Jung, the Swiss genius, saw storytelling as deep as our DNA. It's our software. Stories have a clear beginning, middle and end. We humans crave to understand those things. Nobody likes a treacherous road that has a dead end. We all like a paved path that goes somewhere. Loss of meaning is like being stuck in a quagmire. Religions have provided us, and still do for some, a neat story of our beginning, created by God, and end, heaven or hell. But modern science made that story less credible. Nietzsche said God was dead 150 years ago. So what now? So going to university gives you an 80 year old a somewhat paved road for 3 to 4 years. Discipline and purpose are tied. This is why your religions emphasize discipline. University offers you 4 years of disciplined education. In theory, at least. During this period, you have more time, more opportunities and more help to pave your own road for life afterwards. But university also sharpens your mind, at least that's what it's supposed to do. It should make you analyze things with critical pair of eyes. In extreme cases, it can also make you cynical. Cynicism is the opposite of joy. You don't laugh at the jokes you loved before. You don't enjoy the stories you once loved. You don't believe in things. This is why comedy is banned from many universities. Who need laughter when you can discuss Michel Foucault? If you read Russian author Fyodor Dostoevsky, this cynicism led many of his fellow Russian intellectuals into nihilism. Nothing in Russia made these educated men excited. Just as Proust said, the more we know, the more we lose that childlike curiosity, wonder, excitement and most importantly, joy. So sometimes knowing less is more. So, so there's always risk when you put on your Socratic goggles and examine everything critically. It's exhausting and it can take away the little joys in life. The old saying that ignorance is bliss has an element of truth. So university can hinder your ability to have a lot of joy in life. I studied philosophy and social sciences so it sucked the ability to have joy in me. Have you ever seen an intellectual or a university professor laugh like a child? So the bottom line is that in order to have a purpose in life, a little blind faith goes a long way. Meaning in life is nothing more than a story we tell ourselves. The smaller you are, the stronger your story must be. So going to university might shatter that bubble and might create a more robust bubble by giving you a more solid structure in life. So small people need a story or a safe river to swim in. University can help you find your story. So university is for small people. But for some people, especially those with social science degree, it can install a software in you that make you too cynical, too critical and too unhappy. So intellectual and financial success can come at a cost. Simple joys in life. 
Humans have four basic necessities in life. We need food to survive, sex to make copies of ourselves, a tribe to thrive in, and a purpose to keep us going. So, going to university, one must consider all these four elements, not just the cost. I talk about literature on this channel, but I have no degree in literature. If you want to become a writer, a degree that puts you in debt is not worth it. Instead, read lots of books and write. Some of the greatest writers never went to university or quit their degrees before completing them. It all comes down to how small you are and how small you think you are. The smaller, the higher likelihood you need a university. I was so small that I got not one, but two university degrees. The bottom line is that you need to put your own Socratic hat on and assess your own individual situation and use this video as a general guide. I hope you understood that this was a little tongue-in-cheek type of video and hopefully it didn't hurt your feelings. If it did, it only means one thing, you're a small person like me. Now my question to you, do you agree with me? What was your experience at university? Thank you for watching.